Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here. So today we have Millie's dresses. I am going to do an unboxing. Can you see it? Where well, I'm in the way. Can you see that box back there? That is my fabric, my Paradise Park that for me to work with. So I'm gonna unbox that. I think it would be fun. And I have a book nook today. So those are our main things to do. And it is also button day. There's always celebrations and today is button day. So I thought I would get out my container of buttons that I have not seen. I have not pulled it out in a long time. I have not. Look at this. So do you have one of these? They're like a little, you know, these little tool, you know, for the, often they were made for the garage. And so, oh, is that empty? The bottom ones are empty. I think a couple years back, I went through and sort of, um, you know, cleaned it up a bit, you know, the things that weren't that special or whatever. I had that one big jar of Greg's grandma's buttons, but these are things that I've collected over the years. And so I thought I just might pull a couple of the drawers, not a ton of them, just a couple of drawers and show you. So this one doesn't have much in it, but it's got a super special little button I bought at a show. So the, the hole is at the top and the bottom. I, I think it's an owl. Look how darling that is. And I don't even know where this came from, but it says Notions. There, look at that, Notions, I love that. And then these are beautiful, beautiful, like etched buttons, look at that. Look how beautiful they are. So these are all things like that, all sort of super special things. The buttons here were from my wedding dress. These were off my wedding dress. Uh, which I didn't keep. I don't need to keep it. There's a kind of a cool uh, braided button. There is an acorn. Look at that. Ah, oh, it could be a charm too. And this feels and looks like Bakelite, but I don't think it is. But look how cool that is. It was probably on a coat, like a vintage coat. Can't you see that? So there is, so let me pull one more that might have something special in it. Let me just take a, a wheel. Oh, there's some green. So I did them by colors. See, there's one with green. Okay, here's ones with red. And I have this collection. Now I would go to the shows and buy them. You know, people would have sort of fun, unique things. So there's some red and white striped buttons. So that's kind of what's, what's going on in here. Like, I've had this one forever. It's like, it's more like a, you can wear it as a necklace, I guess. But yeah, there's a smaller version. There's a smaller one in there too. And some purple buttons. So that is, that is fun. That is fun to look through. Cause I just haven't done that in so long. I have not been using buttons lately. Um, and yeah, maybe I'll have to do a project that I can put some buttons on again. You know, wall hanging that would be super fun to do. All right, let's talk about Millie's dresses next. So this is a quilt along Millie's Mondays. So on Mondays, I'll share two, two blocks. We'll do two blocks at a time and then work on the border. And the next, maybe not next week, but the week after, I think we'll talk about building this border and starting that because it's better for you to be making it along, at least I think it's better for you to be making it along the way versus waiting till the end when you have all the dresses done and then you're like, oh, now I'm gonna make this border. I just like to do those things as I go. But this week, I'm using Tilda fabric and the link to the fabric line that I use, Tilda and plus my fabric lines like Sleepover that has this small print. So I'm using that print to go with the dresses, the dress fabrics. <gasps> Look, that sort of green. Now, I have the two from last week, but I decided that these need to be interspersed and not like like next, you know, they're not like the two next to each other. Ah, oh, my cord, hold on. <laughs> so I'm going to alternate these. And I believe that the blue will be good next because the other one has a bit more of that yellow green in it. Do you see that? And so I wanna separate that yellow dress from this one. Ah, uh, yeah, so there we go. And now there is sashing. So I will sew this entire row because like the 
being proactive about the border, being proactive of setting your rows as you go, if you can, if you can plan out your fabric so that you can at least start setting the rows. There's four rows. And so even if you don't set the first row, maybe you want to make half of them first and then decide about setting them. It does move you ahead uh, quite a bit to get that all done. Although this is not big sashing. Probably what I will also do is once I do this row, I will do the horizontal sashing under it and stick that on right away. Then that's done. So, okay, there is the plan. These dresses are so cute. Uh, in the community, Quilt Along with Pat Sloan, some of you have been over there sharing that you've made this, you went, you just, you know, went for it and started making them. I've tried to collect a few pictures, but uh, on the several projects, like including the block a day, uh, many of you are just sort of zooming along and I might have to come back in, in for a quilt parade later on to ask people to resubmit pictures because sometimes it's a little much to be collecting them this early. <laughs> <laughs> it's too early um, but one lady did uh, use her I think she had her mother's dress fabrics and she made it out of that which she said was kind of hard to cut at first but then now that they're made she adores it which what a memory quilt right what a wonderful memory quilt all right I want to share this book that just came in this just came in like just <laughs> I, the mail came just before I started filming this. Angela Walters, if you don't know who Angela Walters is, she's a fantastic uh, machine quilter. She's a long arm quilter, but she also shows these things all done uh, pretty much on a, your home machine. You're, they're called domestic machines. Long arm versus domestic machine is the terminology. So your home machine is referred to domestic. Uh, so the long arms are the great big frames that you stand and walk along. <laughs> But she has a YouTube channel. So if you have not gone to Angela Walter's YouTube channel, I will link it below in the description box because she also does tons and tons of videos on her um, quilting on there. So I want to show you this book. So this is a book nook today to show you uh, this book. There is uh, right now you can get it from my publisher, uh, CNT Publishing. So I'll be linking you there. Plus there's a digital version. So for those of you who don't want to buy physical books uh, or you don't want to have pay shipping out of country um, or in country. <laughs> so uh, there's there's that. She is just an amazing teacher as well. Angela is a very, very good teacher. Um, and I've known Angela for a super long time, ever since she first started in the industry. Uh, so this book, she's done many books. She's done quite a few books. But this one I really like because it is kind of an ultimate guide, which is what it says, right? There's no, yeah, it says the ultimate guide. It is an ultimate guide. And here it lays out kind of all the components. And basically the front half of the book is um, talking about tools, but then talking about styles, styles and how you use those styles effectively for your quilting. And then it's all about breaking it into different categories of the style, like a swirl or straight or vine, um, arcs, you know, so it's really, really awesome. And I'm going to show you a few things. So the first thing I want to read, I want to read this. Um, so, one of the things is terminology. When we're learning new things, there's often terminology. And the word free motion quilting, a lot of people think like you don't mark or you don't do this, you don't do that. And Angela has a good point here. She says, some people think that free motion quilting means that you don't use markings of any kind. This is incorrect. Uh, free motion quilting refers to the fact that the quilting is hand guided. So, you know, it's not computerized. So you either have free motion or you have computerized. So that's, that's what the terminology is. So she will be talking about maybe making registration marks, making small segments of it marked, and she lists the marking tools that she works with. Um, so I just thought that was <clears throat> a really good distinction because people kind of get that messed up at times. Here was an example where she's talking about adjusting designs to fit your space and needs with a stencil, you know, extending out a curve like this so that you can get something uh, that works for what you're doing. Okay, <clears throat> this section 
is called ways to use quilting. Quilting does take what you're doing up a notch. Sometimes it can take it up 10, 15, 20 notches. I mean, it really levels up your quilt, the quilting on it. Um, I know a lot of people are afraid of that and they are afraid that they'll mess up their quilt uh, if they put too much quilting or if they quilt anything but in the ditch. In the ditch quilt is basically no quilting as far as the visual impact that you have. When you do in the ditch, you are trying to make it invisible um, by just echoing the seams pretty much of your quilt. And so therefore there's no extra design element added on top. This book is going to show you how that extra design element on top of the quilting takes your piece up several notches. Now this one is called, um, no, it's not. I was thinking it said modern. She does have a lot of modern designs in here, but that's okay. You can get the whole idea of it. So this first one, uh, she is showing you uh, like her sketch. There's sketches and don't be afraid to sketch something. It doesn't have to be fancy. She's not even sketching it all out. It's just sort of like the basics. And then you can see like the sky it feels like a Van Gogh, like a Van Gogh, you know, if you know the artist Van Gogh. Uh, and then she's just doing these kind of things down here to kind of make your eye continue that movement that the quilt has already been been done to do. The quilt has been made to have this moonlight and you want to keep that visual going with it. Um, so she has, I'm just going to flip a few pages here because I think I'm going to pull you in a little bit more. I think you can see. So here there's like a very simple pattern, but then you practice doing something different. So here's like waves versus these kind of swirls. And then if she has a different design actually within the patchwork itself. Over here is a kind of an echo quilting for a while. And then you have another shape and you echo quilt it till they meet. So it's kind of a cool, cool effect. And here's a close up of this piece again with the um, sort of water effect, but that also that motion is following the line, which adds to what your eye sees. Here's another really neat one because she's talking about, you know, doing different designs in different parts of the quilt because you don't have to stick to one thing. Now she did create the bubbles in the background there. Uh, and you can see that over here that she wrote, she did little swirls, but she didn't end up doing that. Her drawing had them, but she didn't end up doing that on this particular piece. But inside there are different design elements. And so they're all just a little different. And here is pebbles, pebbles. And then she switches to kind of a, um, a swirl that's repeated. And then over here, she's actually following the pattern of the fabric. So there you go. Uh, okay, let me just switch down here a little bit. This piece is super modern, uh, these stacked strips. And then she shows how she was practicing, you know, different ideas and designs. So some of this is called a little bit graffiti quilting, where you sort of create swirls and then bank off and do other things. So there's more about here. You can see the pebbles turned into the leaves. So you can see how that kind of evolved. All right. On, on these pieces, again, using the patchwork to be your area of work and then within them changing up what you're doing. And here she shows like a zigzag so that you can see the differences on that. And there's another one that's a zigzag, which was is just um, super cool because she's taking the motion. She's visually bringing your quilting in like this so that you still have the same feel even though the patchwork is not pieced like this. There's no seam for the patchwork to be pieced like that, but the quilting makes your eye go. Okay, what is she talking about here? Quilting with busy prints. Okay, that's why I tagged this. She has a section on quilting on busy prints because a lot of us, that is what we sew with. We sew, let me pull my face back. <laughs> we sew with busy prints. We are attracted to quilting, many of us, for the fabric and the fabrics that many of us love me being number one is fabrics with a lot of pattern a lot of 
of stuff going on and so they don't show quilting as much the quilting design disappears into all of that pattern so she has a whole section that she is talking about that and showing you you know some different fabrics like here is this floral and then here is what she did on it in the back uh, and then some different ideas and then this section back here is the design section. This is a design library with uh, all different shapes that she shows you how to build them. So I'm going to just pull it all the way back here to a feather because many of you know what a feather is in quilting. And so she starts you out, shows you how to build the feather, what direction to go. And then on the next page, she takes the idea of that feather and expands it. Expands the feather into a curve, like a tight spiral, and then banks another one off of it, and then banks some little swirls off of that and some little swirls off of that. You know, so it's a whole process of how to um, engage with that pattern and change it as you move along. All right. So I wanted to share this because uh, I know a lot of you have a great interest in quilting your own quilts and would maybe like some inspiration for some ideas. There are a lot of books out there on free motion quilting, on the quilting designs, on the quilting process. There are so many different books out there, different, different kinds. But this gives you an insight into this one, which if you've not bought any books yet, this gives you kind of like the whole thing in one book. I really think it's well done. I think it's super well done. Uh, so you might want to take a look at that. Okay, let's unbox. Give me a second. Okay, I'm going to tilt this down and uh, I did not open it yet. You know, I thought to myself, maybe I should just be sure they actually sent me my fabric. Oh, well, this is real life. Oh, it's my fabric. <laughs> It's in here. It's my fabric. Yay. <laughs> so what I have, I'll show you how it comes. So this is how the fabric arrives. I get, uh, I get whatever I need to work with. And so I generally ask for five yard cuts of everything so that I have these here. And then often I have to go back and get more of the lights, whatever I'm using for backgrounds, for projects, that kind of a thing. And so uh, it doesn't come on bolts then. It just comes in these, uh, they're called flat, oh, they're heavy. They're called flat folds. So they just fold them like this. Uh, they're pulling them right off the bolt at the warehouse. So the warehouse for Banner Tex is in Rhode Island and that's where there's all the work is done. So I put in my request and then they cut all the pretty fabrics for me <laughs> so this is exciting now what i have to do is you know i keep because these are big bulky pieces for my own fabric lines i have a shelf in the dining room area that has my fabric lines on it and generally as the fabric lines age out and you can't really get them in stores anymore so i'm not using them that much i will give what i have extra to charity and then i try to keep some of the basic ones the tonal ones or things that i can blend in from line to line uh like this print here you know this print here would be one that can go for uh, many many things it can blend in with other people's fabrics like i am doing here with tilda and so they are kind of my basic my personal basic and i keep those so right now my shelf is full <laughs> it's full and so i am thinking there's probably a little bit of it i can donate out but i might uh i might have to take over another part of a shelf like another half a shelf because i actually have a half of i have a shelf of just like wide backs and other backing fabrics and there's some other backing fabrics on there i might donate to charity as well the charity group uh, so that they can uh, have them so here's this shelf that i'm talking about right now on here are all the sort of regular yardage of the fabrics that i've been you know working through there's drawing room lots of drawing room uh paradise park just the little bits i had before the others came sleepover um there's a little bit of promise me some stuff like that and then here's the other shelf these are wide backs primarily these two are my wide backs uh, and then these are other bigger pieces of fabric that's my wide back the pink uh, that I've kept 
to use for backings or maybe for something else down the road. And I think for sure that group has to be moved somewhere else. So I'm going to either have to adjust these pieces down here. There's smalls and things like that. Uh, I don't know. So this is what I have to tackle. So there's, I got one more. And then this box is empty. Oh my goodness. And Paradise Park is officially in the house. It's in the house here, ready to use. So, okay, I've got it. And then my work now will be to uh, work on the shelf <laughs> after, after I finish taping this and get it all ready. Okay, my friend, you will be working on your dresses, your Millie's dresses. I can't wait. And, and you can show them as you work on them. You don't have to wait until the very end and show just the finished item. Show your dresses as you're making them. Also, I hope you enjoyed getting a deep dive look at Angela Walter's newest book uh, with CNT Publishing. It is fantastic. You really, really, if you have any interest, I love the part, this whole first half, where she's going through and explaining how things work and how you can think about your machine quilting. That is so awesome. Okay, my friend, I love you. Mwah. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.